this right wish we had more people listening because then the, I feel like comments would be like, what's the drink? <laughs> like, what's the, what's your order that you get that's purple? But no one's going to care. You know what I want to start off talking about is what you said to me in the car. What did I say to you in the car? You're doing neck yoga? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you if you look it up, it's probably face yoga, but I'm doing it for the purposes of mostly my neck and my shoulder area. You a crazy person? It's it's like the new thing, and my guess is it though. What is it the new thing, or is it what crazy no, people do? No, it is the new thing. I think what it's probably going to be promoted as, or maybe it already is, and I'm not aware of this space is crazy person exercise no it's used for i'm guessing like beauty purposes like i'm guessing they're gonna sell it as like you know anti-wrinkle and like you're doing these things to like not get it's almost like the natural botox remedy of like trying to you know avoid about- those things but i just looked it up of like how do i relieve more you know neck pain uh, what's great about this type of stuff is you can put the crazy people into a box sure it's like it just draws sure all of those pe- and then you know who people are uh, yeah i get it and it 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 is crazy i would think people that do regular yoga for any purpose is silly it's like really this you're doing poses and you're like claiming it's you're connected to the earth and like a higher energy because oh sure if that's their yeah agenda with it yeah or even just like say for i like act, for activity it's like oh i like it for activity but again it's like it's such a culture well i think that's something that it's we like it's not just a we tend to try to do is like take the good thing take the things that like like yoga like i use it to because i think it's the best form of stretching and muscle relaxation and that sort for of you? thing yeah, and just like my, I don't know, my opinion of of it is like that is its best purpose. Yes. To where like it maybe doesn't have a whole lot of purpose in other areas that people tend to make it have. You know, it's like when people are talking about like, you're going to get so strong and strength and all that. It's like, well, it's not really the best thing to gain or build strength. It's right. Like, it, from my experience with it, it's the best thing is probably weightlifting and resistance training but yeah. yoga has its own purpose just like you know cardio testing your cardio has a purpose and what's the best way to do that and gain you know increase your cardio it's like well go for long distance exercise rather than maybe using weights and doing a lot of weights to gain car it's like each thing has its purpose you just you need to use that purpose for like the best the best version of it kind of yeah. thing you know well, whatever, and whatever I don't know you where like. Neck it. yoga fits into anything. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's going to do absolutely nothing. One. It's like certain stretches One. and like positions where you like, kind of like I guess like kind of what regular yoga would be. Like you're putting your face in certain positions and then figuring out where to tighten your muscles. Or like I would say it's like learning how to like activate your core through like vacuum pose or doing like lower abdominal or um kegel exercises i would say like even it's like you're trying to figure out how to activate and connect to different parts of your you know like those internal little areas that are not obvious um i get into weird shit but that's a little bit too weird for me it is weird but i'm just i'm i like dabbling in things and it's not like i have to buy products to do it so and I, True. I'm kind of seeing it also as like this is like relaxing, just like how I see yoga. It's like I don't necessarily need to do this, but well, it's like I mean, a cool like disconnect for a second, just kind of like focus on breathing and doing whatever why you're don't doing. You show us some right now. I only did one though. I want to give like my favorites. Let me do it for a week, and then the next podcast I'll do my favorites. One of them is you have to like clench your lips like you're putting on like lipstick. And then try to smile, like use your cheekbones, but without using the rest of your face. That's where I'm so bad. When you do like, okay, everybody gather for a picture. I, I can't. I'm like. I know. I do not know. I know. I'm like, 
you don't know how to smile when you have to think about it but like when you're just laughing or talking you smile great like right now you're smiling great but if someone told <laughs> yeah. you to do it but, but why like, okay, do you not know like... how to use your face <laughs> it doesn't make any sense these are all my boys school are... pictures i know boys are like that i don't understand i do not understand because we don't sit in the mirror and practice our smile like girls do <laughs> that's just like a so yeah i guess i don't know it's the funniest thing ever i hate it i do too it's so awkward for people just boys in general it's just like oh, don't put them in a picture yeah. they're not gonna know what to do that's why i was just like i'm gonna just lean into the awkward just... yeah that's why we will never get any sort of like family pictures or like a I don't need any it. of that. It's like, maybe I will with the kids, but you're not going to be there. Only candids. Because like you said, like when something's Even actually that. funny or you're actually smiling, like it's a better look anyways. Yes. But it's like, I'm not going to. But if you actually plan know. a shoot to do that, you're going to be basically like forcing candids. That's true. Yeah. But like, it, you're not going to be natural that way. No, 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 no. And that's where I was like, it had, would have to be legitimate candids not forced yeah and that's not you can find it. you can picture. do good pictures that way yeah I you just don't plan it it's just like they just come about oh sure if someone like happens to capture everybody in the picture sure yeah but i'm saying like family pictures when you actually have kids and you get like you know whatever it's like we cannot do that no that won't, won't, won't work I'm so bad about that, but I was like grabbing a camera anyways. It's like, I yeah. never think to like, let's take a picture. I'm like, no, it's, I don't think about it. Yeah. She's like, oh, this is cool. Well, I think, yeah, this is so not. Don't care about it? Don't care about it. No one else cares about it either. Mostly, I don't care about it. No. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Well, good podcast. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the, the topic today, it's been coming up a lot. It seems like, I don't know, just in the, I don't know, things that seems like we've been talking about the things I've been reading, that sort of thing that, um, and it's also just a hot topic right now, but talking about like delayed, delayed gratification. And, um, I think uh, along the lines of that too, of finding something meaningful, and versus finding something that's um, just fast, quick, quickly attained, that sort of thing. I feel like they kind of go hand in hand. People tend to go towards the quickly attainable thing, but then they aren't finding meaning in it. And that is going along with the delayed gratification is like you're not practicing that. You're just trying to get to the next level, get to the next step as quickly as possible. Um, and the book I've been reading, Jordan Peterson's book, um, I'm going to read a little bit from it because I liked what he had to say about this. Um, it says, to have meaning in your life is better than to have what you want because you may not, you may neither know what you want nor what you truly need. Meaning is something that comes upon you of its own accord. You can set up the preconditions. You can follow meaning when it manifests itself, but you cannot simply produce it as an act of will. Meaning signifies that you are in the right place at the right time, properly balanced between order and chaos, where everything lines up as best as it can at that moment. So one thing I took from that was, I think it was in the first couple sentences, was like, you don't even know what you need or what you want necessarily. Yeah, and you hardly ever do. Like, you might have an idea of the direction that you want to go or where you maybe even specifically where you want to end up. But none of us necessarily, I always used to think this as a kid, like I can calculate my whole life out. Like I have, I not only can I, I should and have to plan step by step so that I get to the final destination in the way that I want. And, um, by the time that I want to. Mm -hmm. And when that goes awry, I don't have the same ability to be able to calculate the weight of the opportunities coming to me because if it's not a part of my plan, I like naturally deem it as it's wrong or something that I shouldn't do, even though that opportunity could have bursted me forward or taken me in a different direction that I actually later on realized I would wanted to have been in anyways. Um, 
that as much as that is like I think packaged to us at a younger age of like you know the five-year plan and the 10-year plan and what do you want your life to be I think that almost puts us into a box Mm -hmm. of like it limits us more than I think it supports us Uh, yeah I agree I, I think going off that too of finding something meaningful like it says in that of it it kind of coming upon you rather than you seeking it out and and forcing it it's like you're also now you're choosing what your meaning is rather than it being um rather than it coming about naturally and more genuinely and i think that i don't know people struggle with that i've struggled with that of trying to find something purposeful it makes me you know excited and feel like I'm doing something positive or good or whatever, even just like continue to keep the motivation because of this is meaningful. It, it just turns to like, you're forcing this thing and you're choosing and you're picking what it is. Just like it says, you're, you're choosing what you want and what you need to where how many stories, how many people talk about how they get money and they realize that was their main driving factor. And success and fame and all that and it's not it doesn't fulfill them it's not the meaning to them and it's like that i feel like that paragraph kind of lays that out of like well yeah because you're you're choosing what you want and what you need it's like at first it's the you know thousand dollar watch then it's the five thousand then it's a ten thousand and it's like well it's never been the watch but you keep forcing it that's like Mm -hmm. the watch is giving you meaning but it just continues to become more and more and you want a new thing. You want a new thing. Um, I think that's a pretty good sign that like this isn't your purpose or this isn't meaningful to you. This is just another thing that you want. And the more that you're trying to force it, the further away from getting something meaningful or or finding something meaningful uh, you're getting. Yeah. And that's so hard because it's like, you know, then it's like, well, what's the advice? You just tell everybody to just like float around right? and just like wait for meeting to fall upon them. It's like, yeah, kind of. So it's tough. You just, you keep, you know, being open and doing your thing. And then hopefully as you get older and more experience comes, you start to kind of dial in and funnel in on that thing that, that is meaningful to you and that you want to pursue. And it's easy. I think everything comes down to balance. I think there's, it's good to have somewhat maybe of like a direction or an idea of where you're wanting to go. Um, But I would bring it back to like your pillars, like don't have it be something outside of you, have it be things that you can control and things that you can be in every moment. Like say my career has been with like in the dance industry like well that has changed what that job has looked like or what my jobs have looked like so I don't want to say well I only want to do these five things because then that completely ixnays me from all these other great opportunities that I didn't even know existed yeah when maybe I was younger or when I started or what whatever but what I can do is always work hard always be reliable always like be available and willing for opportunities like show who I am in every job that I get like present me as like the real authentic person not something that I think they want me to be and then the correct opportunities like you said like just kind of float around like it's more like I'm going to be hard working no matter what I do and then the floating around of whatever opportunities come to me then I can kind of oh I'm going to go down this path or I'm going to go down this path or how does this connect to this okay I'll try that but the through line is how I am and who I am in those opportunities. Yeah. That get, that can give you a direction and some sort of like stable base and where you can be calculated. Yeah. Well, I, I like it because it's, you can constantly be successful then. Like if your goal or your focus is just be hardworking, you can now apply that anywhere to where a lot of people are like, I need to be a doctor and that's, what's going to make me happier. That's my purpose. That's my meaning in life. So they work their whole life to become a doctor. And then 
say they become it and then they realize, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be to where if you're choosing, like, I'm going to be hardworking, you continue to just be hardworking all the time. You're constantly getting that success versus the, I need to be a doctor. Now, the whole time you're not a doctor, you're feeling kind of like a failure because you're not there yet. And you're on that <laughs> path to get there. It's like, yeah, but I'm not a doctor yet. Yeah, but I'm not a doctor yeah. yet. To where when you're choosing something like a, like what you're talking about of the pillars, if you're choosing to one of those be a hard worker, well, I'm working hard with my school and I'm getting that done. I'm working hard in my what internships or whatever. And I'm continuously showing up and being a hard worker. I'm succeeding constantly. And I can, I have the data for it now rather than, I'm not a doctor, so I'm failing. Right. And you just, if you can find something like that, rather than the outside item, like you're talking about, I don't know if you're, you might be building meaning within that, but you're also being way more open to what your meaning or your purpose could be and what could fulfill you rather than like, I'm dead set on the doctor thing. And then you do that and you become it and you're like, holy shit, this, I don't like this at all. This isn't, a, this isn't even close mm -hmm. to what I want it to be to where if you were choosing that hardworking route, you're opening yourself up to so many more opportunities and just like different experiences. And it's all coming back to like, well, I'm constantly succeeding because I'm hardworking and that's one of my pillars. Right. It's like and that what is so you can pick up along the way, like uh, the whole cliche, it's not about the destination destination it's about the yeah. journey thing yeah is uh, like what you said every day that i'm not a doctor i'm a failure yeah rather than if you're seeing this whole process to get to be a doctor you're picking up on all of the tools that it takes to become a doctor those are still tangible tools that you can add to your tool belt and like i say with my jobs like they're all sometimes kind of random and they don't necessarily correlate but if i can see oh in this job i talk on a stage and i talk into a microphone and i'm talking to people i'm needing to like learn how to present in that way it's like well i'm not doing that like in daily life like what does that really have to do with anything but then when i want to do something like a podcast or i mm -hmm. want to be a little bit more clear with my communication when i am teaching or say you know we want to eventually do something different where we're presenting to people well now that silly thing before that i didn't really think connected to anything now that correlates to here or i think it's finding the very intricate aspects of the journey to then to be able to call upon later on or at least see the value of it of yeah this isn't maybe me being a doctor but i'm learning how to study so right. what behavior pattern am I going to get to that of time management and consistency and learning how to break things down for myself or whatever it's like well that might not even correlate to you being a doctor and in, in your actual field but that might be you're managing your patients and figuring out you know categorizing them in your mind of figuring out how to help them better or you're categorizing you know work life and family life and how do I make those work together and you know manage my time that way it's always better just to see the positive of things, obviously. Yeah. But when you can make the practice of breaking those things down, I think no matter what you're going for, the journey will seem like, ooh, I can't wait to see how much I'm getting out of this before I even get to where I want to go. Yeah. And then you have more trust in yourself if you need to detour. If you, right. if you decide, I don't want to do this thing, I want to go in this other direction, you now have all of this that you learned and focused on of how to study, how time management, just all of those different tools. And now you can trust yourself to go apply those just in a different direction rather than you've been so focused on the doctor title and you're like, well, I learned all this stuff about it and now it's not going to apply anywhere. It's like, yeah, that's a maybe not great way to look at it. But the other way you could look at it is, they just put me through the ringer with school and time mm -hmm. management and all that kind of stuff. And I really learned how to be successful in that kind of stressful environment. And then you can maybe also pick apart like which things you did like about it and didn't like about it. And that can help you direct you into the direction you want to go or the path you want to go. But it's putting so much, putting more focus on those, like the, um, the tools, putting it more on the tools rather than just the title or the, you know, the job, the job career thing because 
that's what you need more in life anyways is more tools to be able to do stuff mm -hmm. be able to deal with things handle things you don't need the doctor title it's like at the end of the day you're going to come across people or you're even going to realize yourself like it doesn't mean as much as i thought it did because even the doctor title it's like i think a healthy logical person would go no it's not about being a doctor it's about helping people and that's where the meaning is is helping people i was like well if you don't like people or don't like helping them mm -hmm. it's like you probably shouldn't be a freaking doctor then so i think i don't know i think that's that's something that i've struggled a lot with and it's interesting to me to like talk about it and uh, like dissect it for myself too uh, over the last how many years of just like oh I've attached so much to what you know you think of doctor and just like what that means and how everybody thinks about that and um, realizing more and more like it's so not about that it's not about that title it's not about the thing or the job it's about all the stuff within that right it's like you well, said the journey of it rather well, and than then the you destination can, yeah and through that breakdown you can kind of see like what do I actually care about this for? Yeah. Like, you know, like, I guess I can only take myself. Like, I don't want to, it's just easier for me to always bring it back to me. Selfish. But like, I know that as long as the job that I do or the career that I do, and again, I'm just taking this to jobs. This could be about, you know. Parenting. It could be about. Relationships, whatever. Relationships, you know, your health. But. I love working with kids. So it's kind of like, I don't need to have, well, it needs to have this, 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 this. Like, as long as it's related with kids and the, you know, the development of kids and helping kids. Um, I like being in a leader role. I like being somewhat of like the one of the bosses or someone that, you know, is like making, overseeing things. I like to, somewhat have a creative outlet with it i like to have like somewhere to like build upon something it's like okay well that could be so many jobs or that could be mm -hmm. so many career paths that i go down or different elements of those jobs that i don't know it's like that just allows like when those opportunities come up it's like well does this have one of the things that i like cool okay then i'm probably gonna like it Right. Or does it not? And it's just about the title. It's just about a lot of money or whatever. It's like, I'm probably not going to like it because it doesn't have my core values yeah. attached to it. I think that helps break down the like, why do I want to be this person? Why do I want this job? Why do I want to be with this person? Why do I want to have these kinds of kids? It's like, break down the why. So then you can figure out like, okay, does it actually have anything to do with that? Or is it just the thing that I thought that would bring me? Because you're also bringing yourself into all of those situations. Yeah. Th that thing isn't going to make you better. Isn't going to make your kids better. Isn't going to make your relationship better. You're bringing yourself into that. So. And you might suck. Right. And now you're bringing your sucky self into it. It's like, just because, okay, you got your degree and you're a doctor, you still suck. So now you're just like, crappy person being a doctor or once i get to there like once it's like the whole like um just wait or like you know like once i get to that mm -hmm. then this will happen yeah once i have that amount of money then i'll be happy it's like you're still you yeah just with more yes it maybe makes it easier and that kind of stuff but you didn't have you don't have the behavior you don't have the tools yeah yeah like athletes are a great example of that like they are nobody and they make a bunch of money and they blow it because yeah. like, they they didn't have a gradual path it no. was i'm doing this just for the fun of it for the love of the game and now i'm making millions of dollars doing it but i didn't have that oh i'm making 40 grand a year then i'm making 100 grand a year then mm -hmm. i'm making it's like no you're just a millionaire right now and yeah. you're you manage know, it yeah it's like you don't yeah. you didn't have the grudge same thing with fame it's like you don't have that like okay now i'm gonna practice it with just a little bit more okay now i'm gonna practice my behavior with a little bit more money and then a little bit more money yeah it's like you're just thrown into the fire that that's not always the if i just had it right now you might ruin it yeah yeah you well, might ruin like, it they talk about all the lottery winners you know of how many of them end up like 
right back where they started kind of thing. It's like, because they don't know how to manage any of that money. They don't know how to control the temptations of that. You know, it's like you, you're so used to not having any money or not having any success. And then all of a sudden you have all of it. And it's like, well, you have, you've had no practice. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that's the other part of this that I like. There is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient. Break that down for me. I think this goes a little bit more into the delayed gratification part of it of. Like you don't get an award for like doing it the fastest. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you get maybe that tangible thing of whatever it is of how fast you're doing it. But I think it goes along with what we're talking about of like, you're not learning anything through that. It's yeah. like, like what we're talking about with these athletes, uh, you know, on, on Wednesday, they're broke on Thursday or Friday, they're a millionaire. And it's like, that's an amazing, they've gone through all the work, uh, for their craft and you know it's the same process that they did for that it's like they, they probably don't break their habits with that yeah they didn't they didn't suck and then the next day all of a sudden they're the best football player in the in the country kind of yeah. thing like they worked on it for how long the discipline all of the little nuances and little things that they've learned throughout their process of you know 20 years of playing or whatever um and now they get to this point where they get have zero dollars and then a million or multiple millions. They have not practiced or learned how to manage any of that money. They don't even know what it, like what you're saying. They don't know what it's like to manage 40 grand a year. They don't know what it's like to manage 60, 80, 100. They go from zero to how many million. And it's still it's very interesting of how people still want that. Like that's why the lottery is so big. People want to have this big break, mm -hmm. but they'd never take into consideration of, can I even manage this? Would I be able to handle this? It's like, I, I can tell you, no, probably not. The odds are against you right. because you haven't, you haven't even been able to manage half of that. And like what that, that sentence is, there's no sacrifice in doing what is expedient. If you don't have to sacrifice anything, and you just get it all, you don't learn anything. There's nothing that you've learned. You just get all the stuff and now it's go manage it. But you don't know, you don't know what it's like. You have no clue what it's like. Yeah. Well, and that's, I feel like that's a, you know, another common phrase too, is like, you want it to last. You don't want to just get there as quickly as possible. It's like, you know, it's a very easy, but like with people want both fitness. Though. Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying like you, they, they want, yes, to, they want, they want it. it to last and they want it as fast yes. as possible. I'm it's saying like if you I'm telling both. you which one's better, it's probably the one that's going to last. Like, do you want your relationship to be really good right now and get away, get rid of all your problems? Or do you want to build it so that it lasts a lifetime? Do you want your fitness and your health to be able to be manageable so that you're able to maintain that for the rest of your life? Not just, well, I'm going to work out really crazy right now and be in shape, but then two months from now, I'm not going to do it at all. Yeah. Same thing with your job. Like, do you want to push for opportunities that you're probably maybe, maybe you're not, maybe not ready for, and then you may never get that opportunity again because you weren't, you didn't have the tools to be able to show up in the way that you should for that role. And now you lost it yeah. and you may never get it back. That I think that takes a lot of self reflection and to analyze, like, I don't know. It, it, you always want that job opportunity. You always want that person. You always want that thing that you see as like the dream thing or the best of the best, but don't you want your dream thing to last for as long as you can? Not because you screwed it up because you weren't capable yet yeah. and capable and like, that's okay. Yeah. And that's what I think is so funny. And it's something that you've talked about for so long is just you do, you want your dream scenario as quick as possible. You know, it's like the doctor example you want it instead of going through the whatever t 10 years of med school, whatever it is like you wish you could just do it all in four, but you're not taking into consideration all of the stuff that you're going to learn throughout that. 
and all the stuff that you need to learn throughout that and the sacrifices that you need to make and the the discipline that you have to learn to keep going and all of that kind of stuff because it's like you want this super high paying position and all that kind of stuff but you're only looking at the positives of it you're only looking at how much better your life could be because of the money or the title or all of these things you're not looking at how much more work it's going to be how much more stressful it's going to be mm-hmm. how much more discipline you're going to have to have and and not to mention like even when you get to that point maybe the meaning of that title isn't isn't meaningful to you anymore it's like all of that stuff that you're you're having to learn throughout that process you're trying to just skip ahead and go over it's like you you can't you can't even handle it. You won't even be able to deal with it. It's like you're going to school and you're putting in your 40 hours, whatever it is at school. And then the job is going to be like 80. It's like, you're not ready, dude. You're not ready for any of that. And you're not ready for the money to come with it. You're not ready for what the discipline is going to be of it. So it's just, it's so, and this is going into the delayed gratification. So it's like people want it so fast. They don't want to wait for anything. They don't want to put in the constant work, learn all the nuances and all the little tools that they're going to have to learn to keep going. And um, they just want to skip all ahead and get to that point. And it's like the failure rate at that point has got to be. I mean, it's like, look at the lottery example. You know, it's somewhere 70 to 80 percent of the people that win the lottery end up right back in their position within the next like five to 10 years. I mean, another example that's, you know, I think more like in modern time i guess like how many people don't have a successful relationship because they want what it's going to feel like 10 years in in the first year so then it's like when it's hard and it's probably supposed to be hard for that first three four five years whatever it is yeah they just give up on it or they don't want to continue because they just want it to be like what their parents looked like or their grandparents looked like or what they see, you know, like older couples. Yep. It's like they had to go through maybe several chunks of years of crap. Yeah. To get to this point. But it's like, well, I don't want to wait through that. Even if it's going to be awesome 10 years in, I don't know if I can handle five or six years of it, like kind of not being great or arguing all the time or having to like work with each other and figure out each other's yep. things it's like that is sometimes not worth it but then you don't get the 60 year anniversary where you're like i can't believe i'm we yeah. made it yeah you know it's like that is such a small blip of time and that's also what i want to talk about of whatever your things are when you span out that's probably such a small chunk of the time mm-hmm. versus like you actually living in the dream or what you want it's like if you're a doc so go back to the doctor example, I don't know what that is about but it's like you're a doctor for 25 30 years there's one doctor listening like god they keep picking on me I know. <laughs> <laughs> well we're just gonna like all of the information wrong like, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you're a doctor for you know 25 30 years and your schooling seemed like it was forever but realistic is like five six years mm-hmm. it's like that in the span of your whole career was two percent yeah that but also yeah. that two percent is what gives you the bulk of knowledge and the bulk of tools to be able to do the 25 to 30 years yeah there's i mean this is like i feel like when you look at it across all categories like this is just one of the truths of life so it's like this is true for health this is true for relationships this is true for your job your career this is true for finances. I mean, in every single category, this thing of delayed gratification and having the discipline to continue to do the right thing, continue to sacrifice, it's it's in every every area. It's in every area. I mean, it's like even look at financial. It's like retirement. People don't want to put extra into retirement or put a little bit more into retirement or start their own. Mm-hmm. And it's like, even if it's, there's some, there's something like, uh, I think Ramsey says that if you start investing at 25 into a Roth IRA and you do that for 40 years, when you turn 65, you put a hundred dollars in every month for 40 years, that will, on average, that will grow to about 1.8 million or something like that, 
or maybe even if you start may- out 25 yeah maybe it's maybe if it's cool. maybe it's just a million but it's like still a hundred bucks a month for 40 years and you'll have a million dollars yeah so maybe you do more than that or you started when you were 20 or whatever it, but who's doing that who is making that sacrifice sure hardly freaking anybody and it's the same and it's the same <laughs> with you want health that hundred dollars to go and have fun right now exactly and it's the same with health instead of you know getting up every day or going and working out every day exercising every day you want to i want to have another rest day i want to eat donuts mm-hmm. i want to i want to have some mouth pleasure like <laughs> you're you're doing you're, you're not making the sacrifice and then you expand to 10 years down the road and it's like that health and that image of health that you wanted you don't have because you weren't making the sacrifice and you weren't delaying the gratification of it because that's the other thing too is like you said everybody wants to do the you know 30-day challenge lose 10 pounds in 10 days or let me spend five bucks on a lottery ticket for the chance to win a million Mm -hmm. it's like if you took that five bucks you know how much how much money you're spending on lottery tickets it's like if you put that into a retirement account over 40 years like you're gonna have a big chunk of money yeah but instead you're playing this chance this risk game rather than making the proper sacrifice over here and it's the same with the health it's like you want the 10 seconds of pleasure of a donut over the 10 seconds of struggle and sacrifice to be healthy it's like that's what you're choosing between every time and most people are choosing the i want the thing right here right now it's the expedient thing i don't want to sacrifice anything i don't want to have any courage i just want it to come as fast as possible and i don't care about anything after that it's like well now when you look at everybody else that did do that and make those sacrifices and you're sitting there with no money no retirement you know you're out of shape you don't like your career you your relationship sucks you have all of these things that you're not a good parent all of these things that you weren't willing to make the sacrifices because you wanted it all right now it's like you're gonna look back and go oh i wish i would have changed all those things sure and i think you need the the bad to sometimes notice the good to the to the depth that you could like I bet you're going to like that job a lot more when you've gone through the the crap part of that job or like the working your way up to there. It's like you can look back down and go, oh, I'm so happy I'm out of that role of that job or I don't have to do that anymore. I get to do this or. Well, in the, in the being proud of making it through. Yeah. You know, the working the, your way up, working your way in up in your own work. life, whatever that is. Yeah. I mean, there's so much there's so much win in that. It's the same with the the health and the, you know the journey of that it's like it's again it's the journey not the destination thing it's like yeah it's going to be great when you're in shape and healthy but you're also going to look back and go i learned so much going through that that's probably more worthwhile than this like thing of health or whatever it is now it's like i learned that i can trust myself i learned that if i need to put in the work i can i learned that i have discipline like all of those cool tools that you learn throughout that you now know you can do those things and then you're applying them to other other categories i think that's where the fault comes from is those things aren't celebrated to the level that they should be we celebrate a lot the titles we celebrate the the income we celebrate the you know how good does their relationship look Mm. that or like, what are their kids doing? What are the kids accomplishing? How much ahead are they for their age? Yeah. Versus like the behaviors. It's like, if you can work hard and you can be, you know, hold yourself with integrity and be able to communicate with what you want, like, and understand yourself in that way. Like there is so much that you can create and achieve and do. It might not look as cool. Like you might not be able to like show it off as much, but I don't know. Like it makes your life so much easier Yeah. and fulfilling and like things come easier to you. And it's like the whole, like, you know, you can trust yourself. 
There's that, so many people that don't. I mean, and they that, don't even you know take they that don't. into literally every situation of your life. Yeah. Something as silly as like, uh, if I want this to house to be clean, I trust myself that if I want something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put effort into doing it. Yeah. I want to go and, you know, start this new workout program and like go for it full force. I can trust myself to know that I'm going to do that. Yeah. That. There's a lot of people that don't. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, who cares whether you have this title, you make a bunch of money, but you can't trust yourself. Yeah. It's like, what are you using your tangible things for then? Like you have a lot of money, but. But if you can't trust yourself to like show up for what you want. Yeah. It's like that mo- that money then is sometimes I see it money or success or whatever the other like things that I just talked about. Like those can now be ammo in the wrong direction. Like those could be hurting your life versus helping it. Because yeah. Like the person using it isn't stable enough well they're so attached to that that item rather than the actual like intangible quality about them yeah you know they're so attached to the making the money rather than being a hard worker or being somebody that's you know maybe can be creative to make that money it's like you're you're so you're so attached to and that's everything now like that's everybody in our whole society it's the materialism you know it's about the watch it's about the car it's about the the title in your job it's about the what new tv or did you get the new iphone like it's all about that stuff rather than like what you're talking about are you a hard worker do they communicate well you know do they like how many how many of these actors are just so kooky (laughs) it's like Doing face yoga? <laughs> yeah, doing face yoga. It's like, they're, it, 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 it seems like they're almost not real people sometimes. It's like because they got so much so quickly. And it's not that they didn't work hard. It's not that they didn't put in the effort. But they didn't get the experience of delayed gratification. And then sure. they get so used to that and accustomed to that. That it's like, well, I get what I want immediately. And now if I don't like something is very very wrong right and it's that's a weird quality yeah such a weird quality and we're all seeing that now especially with like this space and the tiktok space and just like all these different ways that people can make money now and make a lot of money doing it when the overnight success or that thing happens um we're all kind of looking at it going like, Oh, I wish that was me. I wish I was able to have that kind of money that quickly. Like they were able to. And it's just such a bad and wrong perspective to have. Right. Because it's like, you're only looking at one quality of theirs and that's how much money they have. Right. Or, or how successful they look. Or people like them or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, I bet if you spent a week with them, a day with them, like you're going to maybe realize like, oh, so this did something to them. And I think it's because they didn't have that delayed gratification. So like I said with this, like, you know, how many people we see on YouTube that like they get viewers and make money immediately. And I always say like, oh, I hope that doesn't, I hope that would not happen to us. Like, yeah. not like it is, or like I would even assume that it would, but like the pressure of that. And now you like, you have to be good. There's no play around time, figure it out, kind of explore what we want, how we want to, like, how do we want to present ourselves to people? How, like, what do we want to represent? What do we want to talk about or display? It's just like, oh, better have it like on point right now because you have a bunch of people listening to you. And it's like, you can't have any screw ups because money is on the line now. Now you have to do it. Even if you don't want to do it anymore, you got to do it because now there's stuff involved in it. Yeah. It's like you have ad, that you know, doesn't sound like the dream. And, like it yeah. sounds like you're trapped. Yeah. Well, and it's like how quickly do those people get pigeonholed into like this is their brand, this is who yeah. they are, and now they're probably noticing that, and they they know that too that they're like, well, I'm getting all these advertisers or sponsors or whatever, and they want me to be this certain way. Like if I'm the 
super crazy person that's you know jumping off buildings it's like i now have to do that all the time in order to make money it's like well what if you don't like doing that or don't want to do that that's not who you are it's like you just immediately pigeonholed into that and now you have this decision of am i choosing to continue to make all this money and give the people what they want or am i something else and wanted to do something else it's like well great you know now you <laughs> now you have to be this thing that you don't want to be because the money's coming in and yeah like you said that's not that's not a position that we want to be in so if you're thinking about subscribing don't <laughs> like slow us down <laughs> <laughs> well it, you want it to be again it's like gradual is the least like exciting it's so way to look at it but i don't know there's more stability in it yeah you know yeah what we always talk about you build the foundation yeah yeah i i just i really like that there is no faith no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient well and that's one thing that i've I, I don't know who we talked about in the last episode, but with um, my reading of that one or that lady that was on the podcast, reading more of her articles and what she said on the podcast of like, you know, we try to push kids to be more advanced than their age. I think this kind of relates to that as well. Like she was like, don't focus on setting up your three year old to be four, make like focus on them being three and all the things that they need to learn and develop and strengthen when they're three, when they're four, they'll be able to do those things. If you focused on being three, that's like, it's kind of the same thing with whatever you do as you get older. It's not necessarily about age, but it's what can you focus on right now and really strengthen what you're focusing on right now versus, well, I need to know how to be rich. So then when I'm rich, it's like, yeah, what are the tools maybe, but it's like, mm -hmm. How do you do that when you're making this amount of money? Get really good at managing your money with this. So then when you get more and more and more, the behavior and the tools are the same. Yeah. You just maybe can handle a little bit more. Right. That, yeah, we all want to be the next level thing. That's another thing that I think I'm letting go of is I always wanted to do everything before everybody else. I wanted to be ahead of my age. Yeah. And... I think as you become a little bit older, you realize at some point you're just going to have to be there. So take advantage of you not having to be there. Like at some point you're yeah. going to have to have the family and have the kids and have the relationship and like all of the things and be stable and be in one spot and all those things. Like, well, you, why rush to that? That's going to come and you're going to have to do that. Yeah. So why be ahead of the game when it's like you're gonna get there you're gonna have to and then that's all that's it you're there <laughs> you can't yeah. go back and experience the other things anymore well and and again hopefully you're ready for that you know you're you're mm -hmm. so focused on growing up or so focused on being ahead of everybody that you now start to make decisions that are trying to get to that rather than actually learning what you're supposed to learn and doing what you're supposed to do. You know, it's like if you're trying to get to four and you're doing all the things to uh, what a four-year-old does and how they're supposed to do it, but then you aren't potty trained. <laughs> it's like, well, what's like, okay, cool. You can, you know, I don't know. You can freaking drive a car at four years old, but you can't <laughs> drive a car. I like write your letters. No, you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it, I like, it. it's just, you're, you're, you're trying to, just blitz through everything you're trying to go through it and you're making these decisions based on this weird like really what is going to be so much better about being you know 21 and being ahead of people mm -hmm. in all these categories or all these you know it's like what what is it really doing for you well that, okay, because there's also <laughs> always somebody that's going to be earlier than you too right so it's like you can who immediately you, get rid of that who are you competing with then yeah yeah well and that that's a great example like the four-year-old three-year-old thing like if you're a four-year-old and you can write all your letters and recognize your letters but you're not potty trained 
you're not ahead, you're actually behind. Because what you're supposed to be doing at that appropriate age, you can't do. So you're not, it's not like you're just swapping it. I don't like that they can see us do this. You're not just like, oh, I'm advancing over here so that this cancels it out. No, you're just swapping it for one. But the one that you're appropriately supposed to be doing at this age, you can't do. So right. you're not ahead. Same yeah. thing of you, you know, make a lot of money right away when you're 21 years old, but you don't know how to manage it and you haven't developed <laughs> your brain in the way that you're supposed yeah. to. And then you lose it. Cool. Yeah. Now you're not where you're maybe supposed to be at 27, 28, when you're 30. Like, so yep. now you just fell back behind because you didn't take advantage of what you're supposed to learn at that age. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Don't, don't go so fast. And I think that's the, like the delayed gratification thing is very, um, popular, I think nowadays. And I, it's one of those things that's like, everybody says it and talks about it, but then how are you putting it into play? What, what, what is the process of, it? okay, delayed gratification. Okay. And it's like, but what do I even do with that? I, and that's where I, hopefully throughout this we've been able to kind of explain like slow it down mm -hmm. like find what's meaningful not what's expedient don't don't be rushing through everything it's not like delay gratification okay i'm going to you know not eat this donut now i'm going to save it for later <laughs> it's like well is that is that the biggest purpose it's like maybe the delay gratification is not having it because then you're going to be healthier but maybe that is still a way to practice it, you know, in little ways. If you're like, I know I'm going to eat this anyways. Let me get my, like you would with a kid, eat your regular meal first. <laughs> sure. <laughs> then if you're still hungry, eat the donut or whatever. Yeah. Like, I think not, again, not jumping to the craziest thing. Like, start with the little things or little things that you can practice within your regular life. It's like for us, it's like. We on we decided on one day a week that's when we're gonna like do something fun, yeah, or whatever. That is yeah. still a very easy thing to like. Okay, I have to wait a week to have the bad food or go spend money or blah blah blah. You can do that with very simple things and then practice that. Figure out you know what are my characteristics with that. It's like do I want do I break that schedule every single time. And like, why do I do that? Is it something like yeah. I notice, like I'm starting to create these other weird habits just because I'm trying to make up for that. I have to wait for a week or whatever. Right. Then you can expand it also to bigger things of, you know, in my job do, or in a, a relationship when we're fighting, do I always just give in because I want it to be over? Do I, you know, maybe fight, you know, maybe more verbally than I need to because I'm wanting to just like get to the end of it so then we can move on and, you know, I get my way quicker figuring out your traits and analyzing it and figuring out who you are and why you do those things and then just kind of expand it to bigger things or the things that you know really get to you i think i'm i'm so attracted to the harder thing to do like what's the more difficult thing to do and i don't know if it's like a sense of pride or it's a it's just a weird it's the sexy thing again it's like it's a cool it's like it feels cooler and maybe like, that's oh, what if I can do that, I can do it on the... Yeah, maybe that's what I've connected to is it's like, it just, it makes me feel better doing the more yeah. difficult thing that, uh, it's like, I do it in such stupid things too, but I, I don't know. I think that's another way to somewhat, uh, practice and test that, um, delayed gratification. So it's like, and even then it's like, it's not even delayed gratification. That's just making you tougher more resilient able to trust yourself more and uh, believe that you can do difficult things and i think like those things kind of go hand in hand if you're always trying to I, I think there's just so much truth in this phrase of if there's no sacrifice like it's probably not meaningful if if you just blow through the whatever it is, the job, the school, the 30 day challenge, like all of these different things. And you didn't really sacrifice anything. You're probably not gaining anything out of it. There's probably no meaning in it. 
the next phrase in this is what is expedient works only for the moment it's immediate impulsive and limited Mm -hmm. it's like it's so limited Mm -hmm. it only lasts it's like the donut thing that pleasure only lasts for 10 seconds but being healthy and capable and able to do anything you want if you need to go for a long walk because that's your only option or you know you're out in the heat all day long and whatever it's difficult but you always do difficult things so this is kind of nothing it's like that is so much more meaningful and gives you so much so much more i don't know pride and like belief in yourself versus the 10 seconds of pleasure from this donut Mm -hmm. it's like and people just don't they don't want to sacrifice they don't but it's so limiting it's so limiting Yeah. I think it goes back to the trust thing again. I don't think, because I'm trying to figure out like ways that I struggle with the, this just in general, is that trust that it will end up working out or it will be, it will be worth something. Well, and I think people, I think people tend to do that without the without the sacrificing. You know, they kind of are just putting it off. Like I'll have this donut, but then I'll like I'll work out later. I'll work out tomorrow or whatever, and then that doesn't come. So now it's just you ate the donut. Sure. You know, and they keep pushing that of like, and maybe it's maybe it's they they probably don't trust yourself. They're probably just lying to themselves and just trying to make themselves feel better in that moment for having that treat or that, you know, whatever. But I don't know. I don't know what, like, you know, how many people that I train that's like, they're like, Oh, I did not want to come. But now that I'm here and I did it and I got through the workout, like I feel so much better about Mm -hmm. myself and just what I did. And like, I feel good. It's like, if only people could connect to that more, that's well, what I'm doing mm-hmm. all the time is it, connecting to that feeling. It's like, I'm going to feel so much better if I get up off my ass and like go for a quick walk around the pond or yeah, I, you know, just whatever, stand up and do something or I do something that makes me feel productive. Like maybe it's reading or maybe it's whatever. Sometimes it's like, I just need to get up and take a shower and just like reset. Yeah. But just getting up and doing something. And I just, I, the, the more and more experience I have of it, of like just doing the hard thing and then going like, God, I feel awesome. This is amazing. The more I want to do that, that snowball just keeps going. And I I don't know if people are just in that almost like they're in a snowball of a different direction of like, they're just constantly not doing anything ever and not getting up and getting that thing so that then they feel like, Oh, I feel so much better. That's so the distance between those moments are so far away that they don't connect to it enough. Yeah. Because I feel like that is just like, that is the, to me, that's been so much of the key. It's like why I want to do things and do the hard things is like, because I feel so freaking good after it. And it's like that, that feeling, it makes me feel capable and like I can trust myself and I have the belief and I'm able to do things. And I don't know, it's like, cause even that same client, you know, they'll do that. But then the next week they don't show up. It's like, but last week you just said how much, how good you felt. Like, why didn't you do that? You want to like record them? Like, remember this for yeah. of you last week? Yeah. It's like, why, why is last week different than this week? Yeah. It's like connect to that feeling again and go like, I did feel really amazing. And it was just get through that thing. Just go and do it. And, but you know, the next week they can't do it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like. And I, I'm guilty of it too. Like I still do it sometimes, but it's so much less and less than it used to be. And it's like, it just, it, it's changed so much and it makes everything better. Now you have this, this just like book of data that you've constantly, you're constantly adding to. And it's like, yep, I made that sacrifice here and look what it resulted in. And you have Mm -hmm. this ginormous book of stuff and that is what is built that is what has built your trust in yourself and your belief in yourself and the discipline in yourself. And it's like, you have to create that book. 
you have to create that amount of data. If you only have like one time, two times, and it was 10, 15 years ago, it's like- Then it could be a fluke. Yeah. And it's like that you're not that person anymore. That was 10, 15 years ago. It's yeah. Like you have repeatedly made decisions that are not that anymore. Yeah. It's like you have to you have to start doing it in order to be able to look back and go, I'm that person. I'm that person that does it. I'm continually choosing to be that person. Yeah. And it's hard, but you have to do it. I wonder if there is, um, you know, also something to that with the reverse. I don't know like what the phrase would be, not delayed gratification, but like delayed consequence is like we do this with kids of well instant gratification that's kind of the opposite well no because it's like when something goes bad like let's say like when you when you do this with kids to try to help them understand like okay so see when we you know ate all of that sugar and Mm -hmm. see how you like you don't feel good right now that's because of the sugar or you know when we don't when we don't walk again, like right next to the pool and we fall down and it hurts, that's because we ran or whatever. Yeah, They're yeah. like, we stopped doing that as adults <laughs> of like, okay, what got me here? What was like, what happened? What went wrong? What decisions do I keep making? What behavior patterns do I keep doing? That leads me to this every time yeah. that, yeah, it's like the, the not going to the gym. Like, why are the people not connecting to yeah, remember last week when you felt good and now this week you probably feel not as good about yourself or you can't get to the goal that you've we've talked about you wanting to get to or whatever. It's like connecting to this isn't random. Yeah. Like you made all the choices that equal this. Like the things that you did very much equal you feeling like this or this happening. It's not like this happened to you. Yeah. We can see that so clearly with kids, but in ourself, again, it goes back to what we talk about of you need to analyze yourself. You need to like disconnect and look at yourself from an outside perspective of, you know, if I was written on paper, where, what do I need to highlight here? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's, I, I mean, honestly, that's not a bad idea is to just write out on paper, like yourself, basically. You know, maybe it's pros and cons. Maybe it's what I'm good at, what I'm bad at, that sort of thing. And, and that's, I, I, I think there is some people that they maybe don't see it. They do have those blind spots. But I think a lot of people, it's just discipline. They just don't have the discipline. And I and, and there's where I don't have it either. It's like, right. there's there's definitely things. Yeah, when you say people, it's just like it's everybody. humans. <laughs> yeah, and it, it is. It's a, it's a human thing. It's like, you know what you're doing wrong. And you're not having the discipline to fix it. Even though it's like, it could be pretty self-explanatory. And that's where I think connecting to the consequence of it could help. It's like when you, we can only see it for the positives of, well, when I do this, I'm going to make this much money so I can do that. Versus the consequence of, if you don't do this, what's the consequence of that? Yeah. I don't feel good about myself. I'm overweight. I don't get the job that I want. I maybe lose the person that I'm with because I'm not showing up for them. I'm maybe not as good of a parent because I'm not present with them or I'm not, you know, like whatever it is like, yeah. That like, what are the consequences of that? What are the short term and long term consequences of that? Oh, and that's where I think you're right. Like analyzing that because with those things, it, it can be, it, it, is it seems more like difficult. nothing in the moment. Well, and it's more difficult to know what the things are right for 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 those things like yeah like like the you know relationship it's like i'm just not you know i don't know what's going on or the parenting it's like they're freaking out all the time or this or that or like i can't i don't know what's going on i can't control them and and all that sort of stuff and it's like it's maybe hard to connect to what is the problem but if you sit there and think about it and analyze it, because I think people are so just reactionary and it's mm-hmm. like something's going on. So I'm going to react to it and try to fix it right now rather than taking the time, like the preparation and the organization of like, okay, these seem to be the commonalities of what's going on. Let's look at the day. Like, do they get enough sleep? Are they <laughs> like, do they seem better after they eat? Are they still ornery after they eat? Like, what is the food I'm giving them? Or <laughs> Does this food before the nap 
is that better yeah. than this food before the nap? <laughs> yeah. Are they getting enough activity to burn off energy and that sort of thing? Like, is that what's pissing me off? Is they're so just energetic and I'm trying to chill after work? It's like, well, they haven't been doing anything. So yeah. how do we facilitate that? And now we do that. Maybe that fixes the problem. It's like, I think with a lot of those things, yeah, the, the, the consequence or like the thing that is the issue can be more difficult to figure out. And it's like you said, you just, you have to sit and think about it. I think people yeah. just don't sit and think about it. And I think a lot of people feel lost. And I think of like ways that were like this, it just feels like you're lost, but really like it's not something you can't figure out. Like it's almost like you have to reverse engineer it of take the pieces apart. Like you just said, like, okay, you know, the kid is not sleeping well during nap time well don't just go like we got to fix nap time like what's wrong with nap time it's like no back it up like yeah. from when they got up to nap time what's the structure what do we have in place what you know could we alter what kind of could make sense that we need to fix same thing with your life like okay i keep you know choosing to make this decision or i keep making this choice when it comes to this why okay maybe it's a uh, I need to learn time management more because I can tell when it's like this stuff comes up that's when I get stressed and when I'm stressed I make that bad decision so it's not the job that's the problem it's not the person that's the problem it's not the blah blah, blah. it's oh I'm not good at time management so now reverse engineer that how can I put in places to get better at time management so yeah. then when those tools structure in now that original thing hopefully should be better or not that big of an issue because reverse engineering, you're getting down to like the cause or the intricacy of where it falls apart after that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not always the, the exact thing that needs to be fixed. It's something that's a little bit outside. You know, it's like the, the, Oh, my knee is all messed up. My knee hurts. And then everybody focuses on the knee. It's like, well, actually it, it's going down to the ankle Yeah, and it's your posture from your ankle that's bad or posture from ankle knee and hip that's mm -hmm. messed up and that's actually what's going on it's not that your knees messed up it's that it's pulled in a different direction because all these other things are messed up and i think to circle it back to the like the delay gratification thing it's like that's where a lot of problems are occurring so it's your like, ankles it's your ankles <laughs> your ankles right <laughs> it's all about your ankles just fix your ankles no it's the like i'm I'm stressed Sorry? out at work and I have had a long day and I don't want to cook dinner. So now I grab McDonald's on the way home. Then I have McDonald's and then I wake up the next morning and I have stomach issues and low energy and I go through work and it's stressful again. And then I grab something on the way home <laughs> and what it's like, but then you're sitting there going like, gosh, why am I so stressed at work? It's like, well, because you're eating like shit. And then right. you're waking up and you have stomach issues and now you're at work with stomach issues all day. It's like th that sort of stuff I feel like is like when you have to pee and you won't go. It's like you just feel like antsy and a little yeah, irritated a little all, and annoyed yeah. and, and you're just like, God, I can't figure out why I'm so pissed off. And it's like, cause you gotta go take a leak. Right. And then you go to the bathroom and now you're comfortable and it's like, oh, literally nothing was wrong. I just had to pee. <laughs> It's like, it's the same type of thing where you're not, it, there's nothing about work that's stressing you out and you're doing all this shit at work, like trying to fix it, you know, like maybe it's so-and-so and, -so and they just bother me and they annoy me and I don't like them and this and that. It's like, no, it's because you eat like shit and then you wake up and mm -hmm. you have a stomach issue and that's facilitating you to be ornery at work and then it stresses you out and then you get home and now your kid's psycho and running around and you just have this whole thing going on. It's like it's maybe not the thing you're looking at, but that, that yeah. moment of instant gratification of, Oh, I'm so stressed after work and I'm tired. I'm, let me just grab McDonald's. So I get that, you know, just that mouth pleasure, right. and the nice feeling and whatever. And it's like, if you wouldn't do that and you would make something healthy and then wake up the next day without stomach issues, and then you're able to handle your day at work a little bit better because you're not irritated all day. And then you come home and your kid being crazy and... Or even reversing that. Like, okay, recognizing 
why am I going to McDonald's every day? What's causing me to do that? Because logically, you know, that's not the smart decision. So is it, okay, well, I'm stressed. So now break down when I'm stressed or when I'm tired or when I'm feeling overwhelmed or when I'm feeling, you know, like I'm not as pumped up or happy about something. That's when I make the choice to make a bad decision with food. Yep. And when I make a bad that's decision with food, yes, when I make a bad decision with food, then that follows into, well, now I've eaten this way, so I'm going to have a drink at night. Or I'm yeah. going to, when I eat this way, now I'm going to be a little bit lazier when I get back home to my kids because, well, I'm stressed. Yeah. So it's like, then also figuring out, okay, the next time I'm stressed, I'm going to intentionally not choose the McDonald's. I can be stressed and we can figure that out, but not doing the behaviors that you typically do. Like I know for me, when I'm tired and feeling overwhelmed or like had a lot going on, I want to reward myself with going out to eat or having the thing. It's like the whole cliche, like on like all stressful day, you got to have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like the behavior is caused by the initial like, Oh, you tend to do this when you're feeling this, or you tend to do this because this happened. Yeah. So it's like, why are you eating bad? Why are you choosing to lash out? Why are you choosing to be lazy? Why are you choosing to not go to the gym? Like your clients, like on those days that you didn't go to the gym, what happened before that? What led up to that? Was it a bad night's sleep? Was it something that you did the night before? That's like spiraled into this. It's all, it's almost never random like that. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah. What causes you to make these bad decisions? Yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's that seeking out that instant gratification, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's the food, maybe it's having a drink, maybe it's watching your favorite TV show and now you're up past where you should be and now you're getting, now it's getting as much sleep and all that kind of stuff. Or it's, you know, maybe it's not going and doing your workout. Like that's your instant gratification is I'm not going to go do my workout and that's going to make me feel better because I don't have to do that hard thing. And now it's causing this like chain of events that's all connected mm -hmm. that's messing everything else up in your life and it's because you're going to that instant gratification thing rather than let me do what i should do and not mess up that whole cycle of day to day you gotta it's like you gotta delay it and that's why we've chosen like we're gonna do tuesdays is when we're gonna have our fun thing it gives us a week every time and it's like having it scheduled and put there it's automatically delaying the gratification of that and it's and it's forcing us to go okay we have to be good all the way up until then do what we're supposed to all the way up until then do what we should do and then we have this checkpoint of okay cool we did that we get this treat this whatever this gratification and now it's like it feels like it was earned it feels like it was purposeful rather than mm, last purposeful yes le, rather than this last second you know fuck everything i'm gonna go get my treat because i'm stressed and i feel like shit and now you're making up stories of how you deserve it and <laughs> all that kind of shit and it, instead it's built in i deserve to give myself a stomach ache <laughs> yeah instead it's built in and it means something and it, it it also is keeping you like you're still getting that fun thing you're still yeah. getting that gratification but it's i mean it's the not sexy thing. It's the, it's structured, it's scheduled, it's placed in there very deliberately rather than the spontaneous, like, fuck it, I'm going to get McDonald's. It's like, okay, yeah, that's fun for 10 seconds. And when you get it, but then probably after you eat, you're probably going to be like, oh shit, I shouldn't have gotten it. That wasn't that fun or that wasn't that great. And then you wake up and then you have a stomach ache and then that, now you're upset about that. And now your day sucks the next day. And it's the same with like the drinking example. Now your mm -hmm. next morning sucks and you feel like shit. And then you have to get through the day and all that stuff. And it's like, if you were to just purposefully place it in your schedule or in your time and delay yourself that gratification sometimes, or, or like structurally, you know, consistently, it's going to feel more meaningful and you're going to be getting more out of it rather than the spontaneous like th those are the times that you got to dig in like right when you're driving home and you're stressed and you're tired and you're pissed and you just want to stop and get something like that is a test right there 
Like, this is your pop quiz. It's like, are you going to break and be weak and go get that thing? Or are you going to step up to the plate and be disciplined and do what you're supposed to do and like win that moment? And then when you can go do that, like you said, like on our Tuesdays, it, that still feels like a win because it's a, I'm choosing to do this based off of these parameters, yeah. not as a, an effect of how I feel. Yes. And then that, you know, the week in between those two Tuesdays, there's going to come times where I crave something or I really, I really want that, or I'm having a stressful day, I mean, you know, stressful day. So I want to go, well, let's, you know, still do the thing earlier. Mm -hmm. now because i have to wait until tuesday oh i have something I have to wait until tuesday now i am forced to when i'm in that same position that i would have been before that i would have just went and did the thing now i have to choose another option i have to choose another way to deal with it yeah versus my old habits your crutch i have to now find a new way because i don't want to feel that way anymore yep. so now it's like okay, uh, now I've, you know, I used to go get food or I used to do something fun. Let me try exercise. Let me yeah. try sitting here and breathing. Let me try face yoga, whatever. Like you start to figure out <laughs> alternative things because you're forcing yourself to. Oh God, that's going to be your new thing. Let me try face yoga. <laughs> that's what I wanted to bring up was like what we talked about of like being an adult is just figuring out what rules you're going to break. Mm -hmm. So we make our own money. We make our own schedule. We could do something fun every day if we want. We have we have plenty of time. Like we, it's not like it would take away from most things besides like health and why are we spending money on that every time? But as adults, we have to set these parameters yeah. for ourselves and decide. Nope, you're only gonna get to do that once a week. Like we can do that for kids, no problem, and we understand why we do that. Yeah, but you can't for yourself but, for some reason. It's the same thing when you're an adult. Yeah. It's just no one's doing it for you. So now you have to be smarter than yourself and do it for yourself. Yep. Yeah, you have the freedom to, to choose whatever you want. It's like it's a blessing and a curse. Because mm -hmm. now you're going to have to start to choose the thing that you need to or you're supposed to. And that thing's not always the fun, exciting, thrilling thing. But it's the thing that makes you... I don't know, better, makes you feel like you have more meaning, healthier, better relationships, better parent, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think that's it for me. Yeah, I think so too. Cool. All right. Bye. <laughs>